Mario Nikolai, give him a warm round of applause. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. uh, so what I did, I uh, started this foundation and I work in, uh, in a ghetto in Ferentai, which is a part of Bucharest. We work with children from there. We don't receive any European money. Most of the funding comes from my own pockets. And uh, the organizers of this uh, conference also pay part of it because my fee goes directly to my foundation. So uh, I, I very much enjoyed being here. I very much enjoyed hearing some very smart people talk. Um, but when it comes to Roma, the level of uh, of awareness of what Roma are and what is the real situation there, yeah, it's quite appalling. So a few, before I, I start talking about what I wanted to talk, a few uh, addendums. So 90% of the Roma do not travel, they are settled. We are not five types of Roma, we are around 21 types of Roma in Europe. Uh, most of us do love to be educated and live exactly like the others. We hate to be assimilated. Assimilation is not a good word. Um, ghettos, I don't know even one ghetto in Europe where only Roma lives. And then for instance, in Romania, the ghettos are usually 40, 60 percent. In, in Bucharest, the 40 percent is Roma and 60 percent are the Romanians. So there is a huge problem with the pers I mean, how we perceive Roma. But I will start, and I will start with also on the motion. So I will start telling you a story about football. So can you run this? <laughs> Stop. Okay, so 47,000 people on the stadium. What they yell is, we always hated the Roma, and at one moment people start saying death to Roma. All right. Lots of people will say, you know, it's just football. But imagine this, my son was there when I filmed it. He completely froze. He was sure that he's going to get killed because of all these people yelling. Okay, what we did, now, I went to UEFA, anyway, there was lots of strong campaign to have a position of UEFA, which is probably all of you know what UEFA is, is the European body for football. Their president reacted extremely strongly. Uh, the Romanian Football Federation was obliged to act very strongly and some very hefty fines were paid. The next game, which it was a game which Star Bucharest played uh, against a team which is considered a Hungarian team, was without incidents because of the fines. Because people were afraid if they will do that again, they will not be able to watch football. What was the reaction of the European Union to this? So we wrote also to the commissioner in charge of Roma issues, which is commissioner in charge of justice, there was absolutely no reaction. There was absolutely no reaction at the level of European Union at all. There was no reaction also for lots of incidents in the last two years, not at all. The European Union just shut it up. I'll tell you a short history of what is going on at the level of the European Union. 1984, there was a report of the European Union which said the following, that Roma are very discriminated and they're young and the crisis is looming. And if the European Union is not starting to address the issues seriously, they will have a series of crises. Just a tiny frame of time after, in 2004, so 20 years after that, there was another speech, the first speech of a director general in the European Communion who said that the European Union should urgently address these issues. So, urgently, eight years after that, 2012, the commissioner in charge of Roma said that indeed we need urgently to do something. 
I'll talk about the competence at the European level. I mean, when I criticize you that you don't know much about it, don't worry that much about it. You, every single one of you can become a commissioner on all my issues without absolutely no problems whatsoever. So I will explain this. So the commissioner in charge of Roma at this moment comes from Luxembourg, the country who has practically no Roma, has the most strongest rules against Roma coming on their territory. She has absolutely zero experience, ac academic experience on Roma, as well as zero experience in ever working with Roma or seeing a Roma neighborhood. Her team, which is called a Roma unit, is led by a Cypriot woman, Cyprus, Cyprus, which is again a country very well known for the large Roma population, around 52 people. Knowing nothing about Roma whatsoever, no academic the same rules, zero. So the commissioner in charge of Roma said in 2012 that everything which is done should be done with Roma. Accordingly, the commission up to this moment managed to employ absolutely zero Roma on a permanent contract. So they have two people who are seconded in very low level position. That's for a population of 12 million people. So that's the awareness at the level of the European Commission. And now I'll give you an example which I hope will, you'll like. And it will tell you how important minorities issues are at the level of the European Union. So this year in March, the European Union organized this amazing meeting on Roma. It was called the Extraordinary Meeting for Roma Social Inclusion. It was the most expensive meeting of the European Union. 350,000 euros spent on this. There were 29 speakers involved. 29 speakers involved. <laughs> Out of those 29 speakers involved, two were Roma. None of them had any hands-on experience ever working at the level of grassroots. One of them is a member of the Jobbik party, the extremist party in Hungary, which is considered by almost everybody a coin Roma person sent in by Jobbik party to look good. So just imagine the same thing happening on gender issues, let's say. Extraordinary conference on, so on gender equality. 29 speakers, two of them are, are women, and one of them is kind of against feminism and quotas. <laughs> well, that's exactly what happened. So the results, accordingly, are catastrophic. Why they are catastrophic? Because we have more ghettos coming up, anti-gypsism is, is increasing, and the number of hot words and reports which cost a lot are also increasing. And why is this happening? Because the main incentive for any politician at the European level is to do nothing about it. The problem is too complicated, it's going to take too, too long, and the budgets are too huge. A diplomatic a career in the European Union it's not made of on trying to reform and being tough. It's made on lip service and being diplomatic, as diplomatic as you can. So they have absolutely zero incentive to change it. As long as we do not change seriously the way European Union acts in the minority issues, we cannot change anything. And hopefully you'll be able to bring that change too. Thank you. Thank you very much.